Okay, forward a bit more, forward a bit more. It's that gray one. Stop, that's a pine. And let's have a look to the left. So today there was a seminar for foresters on bark beetle control. And one of the highlights was the monitoring of bark beetles using drone technologies. What we have here is the Swiss wing tra machine. It's a so-called VTOL, which means vertical takeoff and landing. That is, the machine takes off and lands exactly as you see it here. And at a defined altitude, it flips over and flies like an aeroplane. So let's send her up into the air. Come over, uh, take a closer look at this TV. The machine lasts for about three quarters of an hour to an hour in the air. During that time, it can capture an average of about 60 hectares. One advantage of this machine is that it will do you an orthophoto map. One pixel on that orthophoto map corresponds to 0.7 centimeters in reality, so the resolution is top notch. If you have an extensive forest with one forester, how much can be surveyed in one day? Not to mention the fact that he doesn't have a view from the air. And that forester is in charge of 700 or 1,000 hectares. If you take a look, this is just after rain. Normally you'd see sawdust down here. It's been washed away, but there's some left. And if you look, here you've got holes made by the beetle. Yeah. They used to call it the golden beetle because it always gave the people work. Would you say look, it's would just, you it's just you everywhere. You say, I want to capture this area, I want to capture it with an optical camera, a multi-spectral camera, I want such and such resolution. The drone takes off, captures and comes back. This is an application of our own development. It facilitates bark beetle detection. You can see that it evaluates suspicious trees automatically. So then the forester has to check the vegetation in question the tree in question. There's probably beetle here. It looks like spruce. Yeah, they're spruce. The inspection or examination is made easier because the application generates a list of suspicious trees. You can simply choose which tree you're currently interested in and the navigation will show you the route and distance to the nearest tree, which should be checked and somehow entered back into the application. It's got peeled bark now, but it's still green, okay? So you can't quite see it yet. It really does find some kind of abnormality in the color where it's not completely beautifully green, where the spruce will gradually turn gray and then, then eventually turn completely red. So can we go and see this? Yeah, we can go and look. My part is the development of the specific artificial intelligence that is even able to detect withered trees or other anomalies. With my colleague, we're working to combine the application with a self-learning algorithm that will develop every year and improve every year, since he receives feedback from the person on the ground who says, yes, there really is bark beetle, or no, it was a false alarm. In essence, there are piles and piles of code that provide us with output in the form of so-called probability maps, where there is an image and each point on that image determines the probability of there being an infected or suspicious tree. They eat the bast, so they actually eat the vascular bundle that the tree uses to pull up the sap, and it's that that kills it. If you start out with, what, one or two trees and you leave it, you can end up with a circle of, I don't know, 20 acres, maybe more. We're trying to provide this information to the forestry public. That's actually the intention and the result of this event. We offer an alternative how to make your work more efficient, how to really simplify your life and eliminate pests which cause considerable economic damage, not only in urban forests. And with the help of drones, we can update information about the forest relatively quickly. 